take you live to the parade ground, the Babanyara Stadium. So the team that won the African Cup of Nations in 1963. But unfortunately, uh, at age 26, he suffered a spinal injury in a motor collision and uh, never played again. But it, the, the, the government at the time, in 2005, honored him by renaming the sports stadium in his honor. And I just did mention that we have um, thousands of people following uh, this event on GBC's uh, Facebook pages, the Ghana Broadcasting Corporation. That's how you can get us on Facebook. Uh, the number has shot up by uh, 2,000 more. Um, uh, and then there are people are making comments and asking questions. Um, one of the questions running through um, what we are seeing on Facebook is uh, that for, for, for you, Commander, to explain to us why it is that it appears to be only the military uh, that engages in welcoming the, the dignitaries on all occasions and not the fire service, the police service, or any of the other agencies. Why is it so? Parades such as an, uh, independence parades are actually military parades. And these parades are organized on special occasions such as our independence or to mark the victory of um, a battle we undertook. So primarily it is strictly a military parade. But because we want to get other persons involved to give it that national color, and so we are primarily still in charge. So you have the parade commander coming from either Army, Navy, or Air Force. Last year was Navy that commanded the parade. This year is Air Force. So definitely next year will be commanded by Army. Mm. So it is a military parade, basically. And so the information out there is that uh, these parades are for the military and uh, they then extend, so to speak, a hand of invitation to the other security agencies to come on board and help them. And that's why you'll find that most of the activities are actually handled uh, by uh, military officers and men. And we're told that there's a difference between officers and men. Yes. Um, the officers, um, let me say, okay, they wear their, normally they wear their ranks on their shoulders. And then for the other ranks, normally they wear it either on the sleeve or on the wrist. That is the warrant officers. And the officers are the managers of the personnel. So the personnel are the other ranks. Today you or ratings or airmen and women yes so the officers are the now, managers the of the personnel of and so when you for example when you go to a battle somebody must be in charge so to tell you do this and do that and do that and those are the officers but sometimes when an other rank get, uh, pro is promoted to a very high level he also can direct the the younger oh, men i just had to cut in there the shots uh, that was on the screen a while ago about five seconds ago was a beautiful scene a scene of kente and um uh, uh, t t uh, wow this is the scene i'm talking about this is beautiful and we're told that when you see people wearing kente like they are doing now they're not just wearing fashion but they're also communicating um uh, teacher kantanka what sort of communication do you get from this very beautiful scene here well each kente you see around has a name meaning and philosophy behind it sometimes history behind it uh, so you must know which kente you're talking about the, most of what we are seeing now are a green sea green so that is design upon design mm. Wow, design, design upon, upon design uh, communicates to us that we should uh, build and keep building. A beautiful scene of Kente wearers. And when we talk about Ghanaian traditional wear, uh, this is it. It can be seen here at the Baba Yara Sports Stadium in Kumasi. It's a mixture of everything. You see students in their school uniforms. You see military personnel in their uniform, police personnel in their uniform, fire service, ambulance service, uh, and all the other security agencies in their uniform. But you can also see the traditionally dressed people. Ghana is well represented here. This is diversity. I've seen a few smocks in there. I've seen Kente in there. I've seen people wearing Agbada in there, but significantly is the fact that the Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago is here and he significantly is wearing the Kente. How symbolic is that to you, sir? Well, uh, 
Kente tells you that we are in a very happy mood. So we work in day only when you can't work in day to funeral. You can't work in day when uh, you are you are in a very difficult situation. So uh, seeing Kente is enough to tell you that we are in a very happy mood. We are in a, a, a situation where we all come together to embrace and share. Right. Okay, so, um, uh, but we, we also know that, and the, the, again, I was talking about the smogs and the Agbada. I've seen ministers of states right now, uh, uh, in your shot, um, the Minister for Railway Development and uh, the Minister for uh, the Interior, all in your shots. And, and that's the diversity, diversity uh, we we're talking about. It doesn't matter where you come from in Ghana, whether north or south, east or west. Kwame Nkrumah once said, we look neither east nor west we look forward and that is what is represented here uh, uh, today in this beautiful ceremony ashanti region in history is known for the, the weaving of beautiful kente in fact there is that story from bonri um these traditional uh, oral histories appear to be dying off what actually happened in bonri if you can tell us uh, about that man who saw a spider weaving and then uh, he took it from there well um it is believed that two brothers called krogu and amir uh, were hunters and farmers at the same time and on their farm they noticed a spider weaving its web that was not the first time they saw a spider weave its web but that attracted them that day it attracted them so much that they felt they should understudy the spider and um for a very long time and then imitate what the spider was doing they came up with something that could be used to cover uh, a human body so they showed it to the chief uh, at that time who's called obiansa at Boyre, who was also under the king of ashanti so he asked them so prominent a work that he, he cannot keep it at Boyre, so they should follow him to the king of ashanti the, the first king of ashanti king of say to two so they showed it to him and he made the two weavers um his kente chiefs then another time uh, somebody is coming from Bonyure also uh, brought colors into the kente he was called um, ministers of states yeah. right there in in in, in beautiful kente uh, clothes and uh, i hope that from now on we'll be seeing this in many offices and indeed even in parliament uh, that will begin to exhibit this there but you were so, concluding yeah. on the story of the so, uh, yes. rabbi introduced colors into into kente uh, his sisters went to the coast and brought headkerchiefs that was multicolored so he unveiled this headkerchief and used it to weave kente and got multicolored Kente, which is called Yokoma. Yokoma because the two women were from the Oyoko clan, so it was named after that. All right. Then, after that, one Osei Kufo introduced designs into, into the Kente weaving. So there are designs which have a lot of meaning and philosophy behind it. For example, they have a particular design called uh, uh, we have the arrival of the president of the Republic of Ghana, Nana Adodankwa Ekufado. Nana Adodankwa Ekufado became president of the Republic on the 7th of January in the year 2017. And uh, this will be the fourth time as president he is presiding over the Independence Day parade uh, on the 6th of March in the year 2020 and so the president has arrived what are the the next issues we expect to see commander so once he gets down the parade commander will call the parade to attention and pay compliments you remember I said earlier on that that is a mark of paying respect to a dignitary so they will pay the appropriate compliments and definitely the national anthem will also be played it is after that that he would be a, he would inspect the parade to have a closer view as to the personnel on parade look at their turnouts and then move to the perpetual flame stand where he will light the flame 
So right after this, we should have the national anthem and then the inspection will follow. Nana Aludanko Kufado, President of the Republic of Ghana, has just arrived at the Babayara Sports Stadium in Kumasi, uh, where he will be, indeed he is the commander in chief of the Ghana Armed Forces. And once uh, the protocols are observed, uh, he will proceed to inspect the parade as we wait for the president to arrive and to uh, get off uh, from uh, his vehicle. Um, uh, what's the inspection of the guard of honor or the parade all about? What, how significant is it? What does it symbolize? Well, it's very, very significant in the military. Whenever you have a parade, it must be inspected. Because before you go on parade, you turn, you turn out very well. You make sure your uniform is ironed properly. Your shoes are shining. And so inspections are a part of military parade. Uh, I, I've not seen any parade that has not got an inspection as part of it. And so being the national one, definitely uh, Mr. President will have to go through, see, inspect the contingent on parade. He, he, he will not get down to check their uniform, but definitely it will give him a closer look as to what they are wearing and their turnout. And because everybody on parade will kn knows that the president will come and inspect, we will all make sure we are in our best clothes, in our best uniforms, with our shoes and everything sparkling. All right, so the president making his arrival uh, to the stadium. We were uh, earlier talking about uh, this uh, arrival and that uh, even from a distance, you were able to tell us, oh, no, uh, that is not the president coming all the way from that because you were looking out for certain uh, signals. And then we see the signal here. He is in the company of uh, military personnel riding horses. These are police officers. Okay. This is the police mounted squadron and the police mounted squadron was formed in 1940 to with seven horses and their core mandate is to provide ceremonial escorts to then governors and now to our president the horses were also used for escorting the president sorry the horses being used today are, we have 21 horses in all and it's under the command of deputy superintendent of police mary clara agamba she is riding the horse named Step by Step. DSP Agamba is the first female police officer to head this unit and also to mount the horse for presidential ceremonies since the formation of the mounted squadron by the Ghana police. And uh, an overhead shot of the entire stadium, the 40,000 uh, capacity stadium at the Baba Yara uh, Stadium. And um, uh, uh, beautiful scenes here as the president arrives. And so all these horses are trained in Ghana? Yes, they are all trained in Ghana. And in fact, if you need a place to train, just come to Bema Camp, Three Mounted Squadron. Everybody is allowed to come there to learn how to ride. And riding is a very good form of exercise. So I will encourage the general public to come to Bema Camp, Three Mounted Squadron for horse riding, and, if they are interested. And uh, earlier also, uh, you told us um, uh, the, the parades uh, for the military, but here significantly playing a huge role as By the, the, police. the police. Exactly. You know, the president has just come, is now coming onto the stadium to be part of the parade. And we know that internal security is the responsibility of the police. And so once the president is coming, it's the, the duty of the police to provide that security for him. It is when the police are overwhelmed that the military comes in. So uh, 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 at some point in time, uh, are the police going to then hand over the president's security here to the, the military because this is a military environment, so to speak? Not at all. Here we have a joint security force in place. The police are here, the military is here, and other security is, uh, organizations are also here. So it's a joint effort to pro protect the first gentleman of the land and other high profile personality here. The and President of the Republic of Ghana, His Excellency Nana Adudanko Kufado, 
stepping out of his vehicle and there he is adorned in white uh, shirt last year in Tamale he wore a white shirt with a beautiful design of the Ghana flag embossed on the left side of his chest uh, when our cameras pick uh, him we will be able to uh, see for ourselves what uh, and so very similar to what he had done last year uh, predominant are colors of Ghana and then a design of uh, the Kente as well and you were telling us about the Kente colors uh, and how beautiful and significant uh, the messages these uh, colors mean yeah, I was the telling first, you yes. a particular symbol mm. within the Kente yes. which is often used at the edge of, of, of the Kente cloth mm. and this is called Apremo and this Apremo uh, all right, so we have the national salutes right now. Islamic way uh, again another symbol of the unity in diversity among Ghanaians uh, when Muslims uh, Christians or traditionalists meet it doesn't really matter any of them can say the prayers at any point in time uh, Sheikh Abdul Mumin is uh, yes So like you were saying, we'll first have the traditional prayer mm. and then we'll move to the Muslim prayer and then the Christian prayer. Right. And that is very, very important and good for Ghana as a nation. 
in some countries people are so intolerant that they cannot accept each other's faith but we are lucky as a people and so we need to use some of these petty petty things to build our unity as a people mm. I, I, I have seen families in which you find uh, three siblings one being a traditionalist the other being a muslim and the third being a christian and it, it doesn't really matter In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Great things He has done. Great things He will do. Unto the Lord be the glory. Great things He has done. Almighty God, creator of nations and peoples of the earth, we thank you for giving us this good land, Ghana, for our heritage. We humbly beseech you that we may always to ourselves a people mindful of your favor and glad to do your will. Bless our land with honorable industry, sound learning, and pure manners. Save us from violence, discord, and confusion from every evil way. Defend our liber liberties and passion into one united people, the multitudes brought here out of many kindreds and norms. Look, O Lord, in mercy we pray you upon this our noble country, Ghana. Send out your light and truth that they may lead us into paths of fellowship and peace. Break down all barriers of contention and strife. And grant us we may live together in brotherly unity and comfort. And you with a spirit of wisdom and protection, those to whom in your name we entrust the governance of this country, especially His Excellency Nanando Dangwa Akufuado, the President of the Republic, the Vice President, His Excellency Alaji, Dr. Manamudu Baumia, members of Parliament, the Judiciary, and Nanano, so that there may be justice and peace at home. And that through obedience to your law will be so forth your praise among the nations of the earth. In time of prosperity, fill our hearts with thankfulness. And in the day of trouble, suffer not our trust in you to pay. Our Heavenly Father, today marks the 63rd anniversary of Ghana's independence. And so we have met here to celebrate this national event. We pray that the Holy Spirit will preside are these activities of the day so that we achieve grand success. At the end of it all, we will have every cause to raise our religion. All these we ask through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Braid! Braid! Shit!
Good morning, Mr. President. The 63rd Independence Anniversary Parade formed up by the Ghana Armed Forces, other security services, and the Ghana Education Service. 67 officers, 660 men and women drawn from the Ghana Army, the Ghana Navy, the Ghana Air Force, the Ghana Police Service, Ghana Prisons Service, Ghana National Fire Service, Customs Division of the Ghana Revenue Authority, Ghana Immigration Service, and the Ghana National Ambulance Service. 442 teachers, students, and peoples drawn from the schools within the metropolis with a mass ban by the Ghana Armed Forces and the Ghana Police Service. Ready for inspection, Group Captain Nana Edujemfi reporting, Mr. President. In the last few years, the president, together with the CDS and the inspector general of parade, uh, police, I beg your pardon, will now inspect the parade. Yes, and the chief of the defense staff, Lieutenant General Obed Buama Aqua, the CDS, and the inspector general of police, Mr. James Opon Buenu, are his ceremonial aide de camp. That is like personal assistant to him because they are in charge of both internal security mm. and external defense so, so do you remember ever taking part in uh, one of these uh, occasions and i'm just recalling where uh, having to stand there and wait for the president to drive past you it was a feeling that um uh, it cannot be described i don't know if you have had a similar Interesting, experience yeah, I, I never had the experience of actually being there or mm. being part of it because somehow i never made the cut <laughs> uh, during the, the rehearsals mm. so i couldn't make it there but it was always exciting to watch from home and to sit behind the television and hear uh, my father take us through the history mm. every time it had to happen. Mm. Very exciting for children. Uh, 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 teacher Kantanka, I'm sure you have seen a, quite, a, quite a few of these yeah, occasions. I remember the occasion very well. During the days of Nkrumah, students were lined up uh, on the roadside and I was always uh, very happy to be amongst them. So, uh, holding our flags mm. and waving when the president passes. You actually had the honor of seeing the Osajifu yes. himself. And yeah. what did it feel like standing there and seeing the man, uh, Osajifu, you know, uh, inspect a parade that you were uh, very much a part of? Yes, because uh, you have been uh, brought up to believe that he's the first gentleman of the land. And to see the first gentleman of the land, you, you become uh, a bit very very happy in your life you write uh, a story about yourself um one page in your life that you have seen the person <laughs> that's right and uh, uh commander you was telling us about uh, the inspection of the parade the president of course is doing that in the company of his ceremonial aid the, camp, camps, the igp and, IGP and, and the, the CDS. cds yes and then we also have the forces sergeant major He's in the second vehicle and he's the person of Chief Warrant Officer Baka Ramos. He's a senior, most senior other rank in the Ghana Armed Forces. He's the most senior of all. Mm. Yes. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, and, and, and so now we see the president actually inspecting the, the parade. Yeah. Uh, what, what is he looking for? It's purely ceremonial. It's purely ceremonial. And like you all shared, I'm sure if you're on parade and you saw the the president drive past so close, you'll be excited. True. So it's purely ceremonial. But in the units, it's for other reasons. Mm. 
is meant to check your turnout from head to toe and also parade in general are meant to test your endurance because it's physically tasking to stand in for hours and stuff uh, so but this inspection is purely ceremonial and have you had the privilege oh, of yes. being inspected by a business oh before? yes i have i have i think this was in 2001 i was a contingent commander and it was in fact the excitement is beyond description and then I went Ghana uh, and commander this is what I have been waiting for I mean okay so the president has driven past the security uh, agencies now you see him driving past in front of some very young uh, school children and students and this is what I was asking Silicon and teacher Kantanka about the feeling that uh, many of these students will take home uh, simply cannot be described by words uh, for many of them this is it and they have been rehearsing for weeks just for this particular occasion and I'm sure this may be the closest a child will come to see the president mm. his entire life and that's so one it's of the very very special it's one of the significance of decentralizing the national uh, Parade, the national celebration of uh, occasions such as uh, these, uh, the Independence Day of Ghana. This is the 63rd Independence uh, Parade, and if you just joined us, uh, this is DTV. I'm in commentary position with my the colleague Selikem Akolache. Uh, okay, so uh, we are getting ready for the lighting of the light perpetual the flame. flame. The symbol of the spirit of independence. To remind us of our responsibility to keep the spirit of nationalism alive. Senator Grant are commanded by one of Sakla's two, Agbashi Sali Evelyn. The Ghana Army Guard is Sergeant Osayman San Joseph or Heme. The Ghana Army the Ghana Navy Guard, the Special of Sacklers 2, Ashia Paul. The Ghana Air Force Guard, the Sergeant Abeyen, Otsnil. The Police Guard, the Sergeant Ibrahim, Nazar. Alright, so the lighting of the perpetual flame, uh, it's one of the very significant uh, uh, ceremonies here. Exactly. The flame light and the lighting of the perpetual flame is a symbol of Edmund, the spirit of independence. It's also meant to awaken our spirit as individuals and as Ghanaians to uphold patriotism, nationalism. Anything that you do that does not promote the welfare of Ghana would have to desist from it and uphold only things that will move Ghana forward as a country. And there we have it, the perpetual flame. And um, there is the plane of uh, a sound I'm very familiar with to have been coming from the military. And there we have it. Uh, the president has lighted the perpetual flame. Um, and, and, and that's... It's meant to rekindle the flame that individuals need as Ghanaians to ensure that they do the right thing so that our nation Ghana can move forward. So we need to be constantly reminded. And the crowd here going ecstatic. Uh, they simply uh, cannot control their excitement to be a part of this. For many of these people, and, this is the first time. And in your shot now, we have the effort yeah. towing the Ghana flag as the perpetual flame is lighted. You know, the flag is a spirit of Ghana. When you go anywhere, you are holding the flag. You don't have to introduce yourself. You tell everybody where you are made from. So just as the perpetual flame is lighted, the, the, the flag is to remind us of our commitment to Mother Ghana to ensure that we progress as a people. Everybody else is seeing the beauty of what has just happened. I am looking at the hard work behind the scenes that made this happen. It would have taken a lot of practice, a lot of rehearsal, and the timing was so perfect that as soon as the perpetual flame was lighted, the, the, the chopper with the Ghana flag just showed up in the air, waving the Ghana flag around. It's a sight to behold. The hard work, precision. Exactly. And rehearsal, rehearsal, rehearsal. Is the only way you can get it right. Uh, uh, if you're watching us from wherever you are, and you are not at the uh, at the uh, 
Baba Yara Sports Stadium right now. Uh, just over our heads at the moment, we can feel the vibration of the chopper as it flies over our heads from the position where we are bringing you commentary. You need to be here right now to have a feel of um, the excitement here. Uh, our cameras will try to bring you all the reactions from the stands like we're doing now, but the emotions you simply have to be here to feel it. Uh, Ashanti region, Kumasi is blessed to have uh, the ceremony come to them and you can see it for yourselves. Everyone is excited here. And as we celebrate and are excited, we should not forget that we need to keep our spirits of nationalism alive. Sometimes when you're walking through town, you, you wonder whether we really love our nation. Field has engulfed us. And so we need to remind ourselves anything that draws us back, we have to desist from it. And now that the perpetual flame has been lighted, um, but there are other activities that um, the president will be engaging in. The ceremony will continue uh, from here. Uh, Selikim, are we able to let our audience know uh, exactly what's coming up from here? And then uh, we'll prepare them for it as we proceed with the coverage. As uh, we're going to see the uh, security services continue, some selected groups, including representatives of all the 16 regions, uh, uh, if, if you are updated, 16 regions now, and of course the Nation Builders Corps, Forestation Groups, and other banners. We are also going to see the march passed by the veterans, as the uh, Veterans Administration Ghana. We'll see a cultural display, gymnastics by the Ghana Armed Forces, a uh, physical training school. It is, it is important, Selikem, to talk about the Veterans Administration Ghana and the members. Um, uh, this is a group that was formed following the riots in 1948, the shooting, the crossroads shooting in 1948 that got um, uh, three soldiers who had returned from the Second World War, who had gone there to fight. On they returned and the compensation that was due them was not given to them and when they were going to the castle to demand for these compensations three of them were killed on the spot we are made to understand that a lot more of them died later from wounds they 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 received uh, on on that occasion um, uh, we have a uh, teacher Kantanka here he, uh, when the time permits us will allow teacher to uh, give us a bit of uh, that history she just talked about the fact that and we'll be seeing them pretty shortly the veterans who returned from the war 1948 largely it is believed that uh, it was that single incident that sparked off the true attainment of independence and got Osajifo and the JB Dankwa and the, everybody else who had a hand in uh, Ghana's attainment of independence at the time to wake up and begin to actually push for the final shot to be given yeah that is very true uh, what happened after they had been shot and uh, 23 of them were also severely wounded and this packed general uh, looting and misunderstanding everywhere so uh, this actually made the government of that day that is the British government understand that there is something heavier coming from the sky so that they have to uh, prepare and this uh, again made the civilians okay. also uh, engage in a lot of demonstrations. We'll get back to that uh, uh, as we proceed with um, the coverage of this event. But, um, Commander, you tell us. So now we're about to see the. What, what's the next thing, Telecom? You, uh, you, you, you have all the details about the, 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 the program. Um, uh, and then we'll proceed from there. Uh, we currently find uh, pleasantries uh, being exchanged by some of the high-profile dignitaries who are here. Uh, of course, the president paying uh, uh, some courtesies to Otumfo, the Speaker of Parliament, and uh, the other invited guests who are here. And we, um, we, we have already informed you, seated uh, to the right side of the president, standing there right now, is the guest of honor for the 63rd Independence Day uh, celebration, who is uh, the Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago, and to his right is a spouse who came along with him.
So uh, we're about to see the, the, the match parts now. Um, the Ghana Armed Forces and the security services will march off to pave way for the pupils and the students to march as well as the other uh, groups. And after that, we'll have the gymnastics and other cultural performances. It is after that that the military... So, by the right of quick march! Your Excellency, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, the contingents from the Ghana Armed Forces and other security services will march off to make way for the march passed by the school children, representatives of the Nation Builders School, civil society groups, and the Veterans Administration Ghana. hand you over to Madame Katanda Chumampofo, the Ghana Education Service Head of Public Relations, to continue with the match passed by the basic and senior high schools. Thank you very much, Captain Abena Dakua Dapa. So, uh, all the pupils and students who will be marching here are pupils and students who have been assembled from various schools in the Kumasi metropolis. Um, 
and they will be doing the match pass. Uh, they have been rehearsing on these grounds for uh, at least five weeks. And so uh, we wait to see what they have to display to the rest of Ghana. It's the 63rd Independence Day in Ghana. And uh, uh, be before we see the students come uh, to match, and um, of course the GS is playing uh, an active role in this, this is the, uh, the Armed Forces. The force, Mass Band. The Mass Band. Yes, and it's made up of the Armed Forces Central Band, the Army Band, the Navy Band, the Air Force Band, and the Police Band. So this is the Mars Band. Okay, um, and, and, and I, I just wanted to find out from the traditional ruler's point of view here, uh, how, when you, when, when you first heard that uh, this year the ceremony was being taken to Kumasi, what was the reception like? How did you receive that news? Oh, it was uh, oh, had uh, without asking any question, we were we had to embrace it mm. with all our hearts uh, because it makes history. The first time in history that uh, something of that nature is to take place in Kumasi and for the whole of the region. It's interesting that you are a historian and today you will be part of history uh, when uh, many years to come it is said that uh, the first uh, independence day parade at the national level when it was brought to kumasi uh, teacher kantanka yeah. uh, was part of the commentary yeah. team and for gbc <laughs> and, and so you become a part of history yes. uh, and uh, others who have to narrate that many 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 years to In come the 60s, after today. i was holding uh, the flag mm. And among those who had lined up on the roadside, oh. and uh, it was even difficult to sing the national anthem those days. <laughs> uh, those days in the early 60s, the national anthem was God uh, was not God bless our homeland Ghana. Mm. It was. Uh, uh, lift up the flag, flag of, of Ghana. Ghana. Yeah. Okay, so we've got to this point and uh, this is where Commander would have to let us know exactly what is going on. President Ekufado and his guest of honor. Alright, so now we have the mass band in our shots and the parade commander has called the student contingent to attention and they have started marching. In all, we have 16 contingents from basic and senior high schools drawn from Kumasi Metropolis and Kwa Daso, Oforikrum and Asokore Mampom Municipality. We we'll also have the Veterans Administration Ghana March Pass. We we'll also have the Nation Builders Corps or NAPCO. We we'll have representatives from all 16 regions. I can tell you for sure that we we'll have the Kayaes also on parade today. And so it's going to be a beautiful sight to behold. The Kayae, we saw them when they were coming in. Uh, I thought it was a beautiful sight. Um, uh, they but I had came my in yes, with, this, their headpans, with their headpans, so you could tell that these this, were the Kaye coming in, and I'm sure that in our subsequent bulletins we'll bring you some of those oh, shots. Oh, 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 we'll bring those, uh, but I have my personal reservations, uh, which I'll uh, express later on another platform. Um, but all the same, the Kaye were here with their headpans also to participate. Uh, at this event, we'll see them, uh, and um, one of the questions. We have or do we intend to take these girls off the streets um, and give them something more reliable to depend on and so on. These are questions of course that will come up. Everything that happens here is supposed to uh, ignite a conversation that will eventually uh, help in the development of uh, the nation and so uh, let's let's talk about all these things but then we have the students marching right now uh, for many of these students have we, as we've been talking about out since we began uh, a commentary on this uh, celebration we have been telling for many of these students this will forever be in their memories many of them will live 
to tell generations yet unborn how they were a part of this. Today we've had uh, teacher Kantanka who had the privilege of waving a flag when Nkroma uh, visited. Uh, today he's uh, telling that story still with a lot of excitement and still with uh, uh, some very nostalgic memories and feelings. Uh, so many of these, uh, another 50 years to come, 60 years to come, will be recounting the day they were part of this event. Let me take this opportunity to explain um, the, the kind of kente that uh, the president has on his... Uh, right. Thing. Yes. That kente tells a lot of history. Uh, it is called Ohine Afrosheng. That was uh, made to commemorate the occasion when the, uh, the king of Ashanti was um, exiled. Mm. British came to this Kumasi and arrested him and took him to uh, the Seychelles Island. And the people who were weaving at that time, the weavers at that time from Bonyure, decided to commemorate the occasion by weaving a type of kente called Ohene Afroshen. And that is what the president has around his neck. All right, uh, the beautiful one. And when the when the president comes back on our screens, we will certainly uh, let you explain again so that our viewers and there he is. That's the president yes, okay. taking the salute. And so these are the colors you were explaining yeah, to us. Is, uh, we have a, a type of design mm. which we call a zigzag, mm. uh, which means that I am general. I'm ubiquitous. I'm hardworking. Wow. And, and so uh, oh, last year. Uh, in Tamale, we were told that even the way you wear a hat with a smock gives out a certain message. Uh, it's the same with the kente, the colors you wear and the designs. On and, and so if I am not aware and, um, of the meaning of some design and I wear it to a certain public space and give the wrong message, what can be the replication, replications on, on me? Well, people there who understand the meaning might approach you and maybe give you a new cloth to wear. Mm. If you are wearing a whole piece of cloth, uh, you will be giving another to wear. All right. Well, we'll come to the traditional bit in a short while. We'll now turn our attention to the students who have been drawn from this is the TI Amadia Senior High School, my school, and uh, uh, Opoku Wari Senior uh, High School. Uh, forgive my bias, <laughs> I, I simply cannot. And uh, Flying Officer Anas is very much a part of this as well. I'm also an old student of uh, Amas. This is the Opoku Wari Senior High School in their traditional yellow and uh, uh, sea blue colors. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's beautiful, and the lines are meticulously straight. These students have been practicing for a while, I can tell. And at this point, you can't afford to miss. Uh, you would have to fall in line because it is a time where you finally get to showcase all the practice and all the hard work that have gone into this. And uh, as they march, um, then you'll be giving credit to schools and how they're doing and their performance. Uh, as they are coming the through. Sankofa right? Senior High School there in your shop in your uh, and they are in their white and uh, pink baby uh, pink <laughs> <laughs> that's nice oh and they are being led by their teachers uh, who have been taking them through the rigorous training and you can see and I'm told that in many schools um, to select a teacher who will lead this, uh, these uh, students in this kind of uh, uh, ceremony, sometimes the competition is tough. Uh, it can be very keen uh, just to decide which of the teachers, because even for teachers, this is not a small matter, as we say in Ghana. And the President, His Excellency, will be standing too uh, as he receives uh, all these uh, students marching past. T.I. Ahmadiyya uh, Senior High School again, one senior short. And their lines are straight. Uh, well, our lines are uh, 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 always is also <laughs> marching through. Uh, their lines have always That is the St. Luanga JHS being led by a female teacher. It's important to emphasize uh, in these times of talking about gender equality. 
but we see women uh, playing their role. And, and, and do, you see, do you see the, 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 the feet of the students? Um, it's in unison. None of them missing their steps. And these are uh, basic schools. A while ago, we saw the basic schools. Um, we were so what's instructive is that all the schools that are matching here were assembled from the Kumasi metropolis and surrounding areas and uh, it's homegrown uh, Kumasi beyond eight so to speak <laughs> this is beautiful and so on occasions such as this we, we it's the mass band that is providing the background music to which uh, the match pass is uh, taking place. Commander, you, you may want to tell us what goes into selecting the songs. I realize uh, uh, many of the songs, uh, 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 how do you select them? Well, the session is done by Pastor and his personnel. But basically, we normally play martial music or patriotic songs. You know, on this day, we need to whip up that spirit of nationalism. And so it's basically patriotic songs and martial music that is played. And that is normally the responsibility of the band officer. So he does that in conjunction with his lieutenants. Yeah. All right. Yes, a while ago, yes. Okay, so this is not my fault, but again, <laughs> my school. <laughs> but this time they are paying the, compliments, so you can see oh, the this is to a the junior, right. This is yes. a junior high school, oh, okay. and uh, they have turned to the right. Yes, to pay uh, compliments. So, uh, and at some point, one the leader shouts, eyes uh, right. right. And you, you can't miss it, you can't get it wrong when, when, when they say eyes right, the eyes must turn to the right at the same time. Yes. Interesting. Uh, and so, who does the training of these children yeah, that uh, and the students? They prepare a college uh, primary school just marching past there. So much effort put into the preparation of this <laughs> one event, historic Hello. event, a big day for people in Kumasi, a very big day for people in the Ashanti region and a historic one of course because it's now 16 regions if it's going to go around you don't know when it will come back to your turn again so yes the preparations that were put into this were really done meticulously And so the, the pupils and the students, when they march off, they would go and take their seats. You know, over the years, when, they, when we keep them there for too long, a lot of them fall off. Some of them are so anxious, I believe they don't even eat at home. And so for this year, we're allowing them, once they march off, you go and take their seats. And that is when the Ghana Armed Forces and the other security services will march on to continue with the rest of the parade. That's Good Shepherd RC Junior High School. And I cannot stress enough that as we put in so much effort for today, we should always remember that in everything we do, Ghana must come first. That is Odumasi Experimental Junior High. These are physically challenged persons, students, 
who were not left out of the fan. And this emphasizes the fact that disability is not inability because they were also able to stay in the sun and they came early, they've done their rehearsals and they are showing off what they are able to do. That is NAPCO. NAPCO. Yes, Nation Builders Call. Right behind Napco, we have a half origin. That's a beautiful shot, the best eye view of uh, the entire event. Sixty third. Ahafu region is here to celebrate the 63rd uh, Independence Day as well. And again, we have a list of uh, those who will be marching past before uh, the security agencies uh, take their turn. Uh, these are traditional organizations also. This is the Ahafu region. Ahafu region was uh, created uh, a little over a year ago, about one and a half years ago, I believe, uh, when uh, in December 2018, Ghanaians went to the polls to decide uh, through a referendum for the creation of more regions, the Buna region, the Ahafu region, the Buna region. Uh, ably represented here as well uh, so we had the Puno region being created then the Puno East of course Ashanti region has always existed since uh, independence and the capital of the Ahafu region is Gosu mm. uh, as well as uh, the Puno the Puno East region Tichuman. is Techiman Techiman So uh, we see the beauty of the Ghanaian Kente, of course, once again in display. Ah, these are the masqueraders. Um, uh, uh, from central the regional <laughs> masqueraders, central region masqueraders. Uh, obviously, you can tell from the activity. And uh, it's it's so it's amazing how um, unique things can be attributed to groups in Ghana. As soon as I saw the masqueraders, even without having to read the the, the band, that's uh, eighty percent from the central region right. and uh, th because they have a special festival especially in Winneba where you have these and, things and happening. you have the Manya Krobo cultural troupe uh, also coming in and of course uh, typically uh, represented of them in their beats. And headgear, headgear, the beats the way the cloth is worn, that is the Manya Krobo, cultural truth. Masqueraders once again to the site. Normally you see them pop up uh, during the holiday season. Oh, and we have the greater Accra region. Okay, Just so, so it means that uh, all the regions across the country are here uh, uh, to showcase uh, what they have 
in terms of culture and in terms of their unique identities. Um, we are being told um, uh, currently the 40,000 capacity uh, Baba Yara Stadium is filled up. There is no longer space to accommodate anybody. Can you believe that more than 40,000 people have already arrived at the stadium? Every seat at the Baba Yara Sports Stadium is occupied as we speak and uh, around uh, on the peripheries of the stadium a lot of people have come together here. The police are pleading with uh, people in the That's the Mania Krobo cultural troop. Uh, there once again, overhead shots. Uh, we are seeing the OT region uh, being showcased. The capital of the OT region is Dambai, and uh, that is the OT region. The OT region was carved out of the Volta region, and uh, that is the, the interesting one. And I see that um, their eyes are covered. I hope, um, <laughs> but this is well rehearsed, so they know exactly what they're doing in the upper west uh, region uh, in their smocks there mm. oh yes uh, and, and uh, the uh, fire uh, display uh, yes um, oh, uh, this display of um, people like spiritual prowess <laughs> and uh, a, a culture as well all combined in one um, uh, it's um, it's about time we began also to look at as we talk about heritage, especially within the month of March, the month of independence. That we we begin to look at the beautiful aspects of our traditional beliefs as well, so that our love for Christianity and for Islam does not make us uh, do away with many of our traditions. Especially the preservation of our culture in the face of. Um, taking on other Western culture and abandoning what is truly ours. Uh, okay. That's so. the Savannah region. Um, uh, in your show, the capital of Savannah region is Damongo. Savannah region, of course, one of the regions that was uh, recently carved out of the northern region, the Savannah region, as well as the northeast region, were carved out of the uh, then northern region uh, to make way for easy administration of that region because it was extremely huge and uh, past uh, regional ministers had difficulty administrating a large region such as that and uh, they are here, Savannah region. Butchers and Livestock Farmers Association, these are a group of people who have contributed to the nutrition needs of Ghanaians and indeed uh, under the watch of uh, President Kufado, uh, they have uh, a policy, uh, the rearing for job, food and jobs and uh, these groups of people and the railway line uh, are, are, are here as well and uh, recently we've seen uh, the construction of a railway line 
ongoing from our Mbakadam um, uh, through to Tema and uh, other areas uh, in, uh, in the country and uh, it's, it's exciting to know that that is being revived as well. Uh, the masqueraders of course always on parade. The Volta region, the Volta region, uh, the region that recently gave birth to the Uti region. Uh, it's here also displaying uh, their unique identity, their culture and um, some bobo dance as well. You cannot miss Volta. No, there's no way. Sally, you, 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 I'm sure you identify with it. I do identify with it. <laughs> the Volta region, uh, the bobo bo dance. And it's, it's done in a special fashion. Because uh, it might look very easy, but if you don't take care, you can't twist the handkerchiefs around uh, and get it moving throughout uh, the dance. Interesting to see uh, our rich uh, culture, uh, culture in diversity being displayed. Thank you, Mr. President, for the Keta port. I saw that a while ago. 63 years of independence, 63 years of the name Ghana. But people have said that after 63 years, what gains have we made as a people? All too often, we have tended to look at the negative stories and failed all too often to see the positives that Ghana has made, the positive marks and gains that Ghana has made in the last 63 years. Uh, internationally, Ghana is acclaimed as uh, an icon of peace and a beacon of democracy. Uh, and, and so there are times that um, I believe, um, uh, Teacher Kantanka, that we must pause to reflect uh, not just on the negatives but also on the many many positive things that have happened to Ghana in the last 63 years. Yes, um, uh, that we are united cannot be left out. It is only unfortunate that occasionally um, lack of knowledge makes some politicians make statements which uh, divide us. But uh, this is enough to tell us that uh, what is important is to make sure that all that we do is uh, towards unity. Yes. Uh, the As the Asante the uh, has always been um, at the center of culture, not because they are the only people with culture, all have their culture, and today we have seen culture displayed from all regions. The uh, culture here is strong and maintained because they were the last to be colonized. The, those at the coast had this um, a bit adulterated just because they had opportunity, uh, if you like, to associate themselves with a, with a European uh, group. culture in them. Uh, the, we are told that uh, the people here did not want uh, independence. Uh, this we must learn that is not true because um, Ashanti had to give up its own independence to join the, uh, the coastal people, that is the, uh, the Gold Coast to attain independence. Before the independent, before Ghana's independence, Ashanti was an independent nation. It was rather the Gold Coast that was under the British control. And uh, when the time came for the Gold Coast to demand their independence, Ashanti met and decided that no, we cannot have our independence when our brothers don't have theirs. So let's drop our independence, join them as a one nation, call ourselves also Gold Coast. So Asante became part of the Gold Coast and they fought for the independent. So that is a big sacrifice.
the 63rd Independence Day Parade here at the Babayara Sports Stadium. Uh, just had teacher Kantanka, who is a historian at the Minsha Palace, tell us that contrary to some historical narratives, that uh, the Ashanti Kingdom at the time did not want Ghana to be independent, that indeed they joined the rest of the people of the then Gold Coast to strive and to fight for the attainment of independence. And so whoever has that narrative, uh, you must begin to revise your notes at this point in time. Uh, we are still seeing uh, various groups. These are nurses groups showing what staff they are also made of, uh, participating actively here at this uh, independence. These are fruit sellers and producers. Everyone, all people from all walks of life are here and they are fully participating, participating in this event. event. And what, and what excites, excites me about this is uh, Selikim, the patriotism. Nobody is being paid for taking part in this parade. Everyone here is doing that on the basis of volunteerism. And so it means that the Ghanaian can volunteer. The Ghanaian can offer service for free. The Ghanaian is patriotic. The Ghanaian, oh, or two for to to right there, sitting in state together with uh, his wife and uh, other uh, dignitaries from the Ashanti uh, kingdom. And so I was talking about the, the spirit of the Ghanaian when the right atmosphere is created for him. You, you, you don't agree with me? Exactly. Um, it's important for us to um, acknowledge that we are who we are, we have an identity. That identity is something that cannot be taken away from us. Uh, no matter how globalized we are, uh, being the Ghanaian you are, with the language you speak and where you come from makes you you. And it is protecting our land, our natural resources, our assets, and defending what we have. And there you have in your short day, uh, the Kayaye who uh, have just come in. We were telling you uh, earlier about the Kayaye. Uh, just okay. before them, bush meat sellers uh, yeah. just uh, gone by, but you see the Kayaye. Uh, and for those uh, who may not be they familiar. They do not need a yeah. banner. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they, they, by their headpants, you can tell yes. um, what they are. Uh, and, and, and who they are and what they, they trade uh, in. Yes, uh, these are uh, uh, the, the Bush Meat Sellers Association. Bush, these are not just ordinary meat sellers, but they are the bush meat. Uh, that's the first time I'm having to know that there's an association of bush meat sellers. And it's exciting to see this association. Then it means that um, the bush meat industry can be regularized and uh, regulated, I beg your pardon. Uh, that's because anybody kills anything and calls it bush meat. But once they have an association, I'm sure that they will ensure that we have wholesome uh, meat coming from uh, Ghanaian bushes. And it also raises the point of having uh, minority groups uh, involved in whatever you're doing, and no matter how little the group is. Of an independent Ghana, it is reported that at the opening of the George Patmore Research Library on African Affairs in Accra on the 30th of June, 1961, President Nkrumah Rang Padmore as one of the greatest architects of the African liberation movement dedicated to African Union and unity. The attainment of your independence in 1957 under the leadership of Dr. Nkrumah was therefore cause for celebration not only in Ghana but also among the nations of the world which at that time were still struggling to free themselves from colonial rule. Through the formal establishment of, of relations between the independent countries of Trinidad and Tobago and Ghana, that will take place for 10 years later in 1967, the success of Ghana's independence struggle provided an example of what was possible to those colonies yet to follow in Ghana's footsteps. This close relationship put forward by the United Kingdom and the United States was a resolution which was sponsored and secondly sponsored by the UK 
and seconded by Ghana when Trinidad and Tobago was admitted to the United Nations. Over the 53 years of diplomatic relations between our countries, we have pursued shared interests in our bilateral relations and in relation and in regional and international fora, including the African, Caribbean, and Pacific group of states. I wish to draw to your attention specifically the two areas of cooperation, agriculture and energy, which build on a history of collaboration between our two countries. The importance of agriculture in the development of a country cannot be overstated as it provides the most basic and essential form of security for society. This food security also has the potential to translate into income security as it provides means of sustenance and income for many of our people. Both Trinidad and Tobago and Ghana are producers of cocoa and cooperation in this area between our countries dates back to our colonial past. The Cocoa Research Unit and the scheme of 1930 at the Imperial College of Tropical Agriculture at St. Augustine in Trinidad and Tobago was financed jointly by several governments, including the government of Ghana. Ghana hosted the first round table on sustainable cocoa economy in October 2007, followed by Trinidad and Tobago in March 2009. Both our countries are also state parties to the International Cocoa Agreement of 2001. Trinidad and Tobago has an interest in furthering collaboration with Ghana in developing our cocoa sectors through establishing linkages between our respective cocoa management authorities. Exchanges in expertise and technology, sharing of genetic material, training, joint venture projects, cocoa tourism, and the processing of cocoa into finished products along the cocoa value chain are all matters of interest between our both countries. With respect to energy, Trinidad and Tobago has been involved in the petroleum sector for over 100 years, undertaking considerable oil and gas exploration on land and in shallow water. As the largest oil and natural gas producer in the Caribbean, Trinidad and Tobago's hydrocarbon sector moved from an oil one to mostly natural gas base in the early 1990s. In January 2007, the then Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago, the late Patrick Manning, announced the establishment of an African Energy Initiative at the eighth ordinary session of the African Union in Addis Ababa in Ethiopia. The objectives of the initiative for Trinidad and Tobago were to provide assistance to the countries of West, Central and South Africa in developing their energy sectors. To further the economic development and wealth of the selected states of the African Union by providing free technical expertise in an advisory capacity to assist them in monetizing their petroleum and natural gas resources. Also to assist Africa's achievement of the United Nations Millennium Development Goals. And thirdly, to enhance opportunities for South-South cooperation with the selected states of the African Union. Additionally, there have been discussions between the Takaradi Technical University of Ghana and the University of Trinidad and Tobago, UTT, focused on exploring between the two universities the development of human resources and technical capabilities for Ghana's oil and gas industry. Trinidad and Tobago is ready and willing to assist in the development of this new area of economic activity in Ghana and you will find in Trinidad and Tobago a ready partner through energy skills training and linkages between our tertiary institutions. These two areas, energy and agriculture,
build on a history of collaboration between our two countries. It is for this reason that Trinidad and Tobago would wish to enter into arrangements with Ghana as soon as possible for the establishment of air services and transportation between our two countries. This would promote the movement of people and goods and improve the trade prospect between our countries. As I close, I recall that on the last occasion I had the privilege to visit Ghana in 2016. I took the opportunity to visit Elmina Castle, which was used as a facility for the holding and shipping of slaves from Africa to the Americas. This movement of persons from Africa into the Americas brought with it a deep reservoir of culture, cultures and traditions, which continue to enrich and sustain us for centuries after our arrival in that part of the world. Trinidad and Tobago, as the first country in the world to declare a national holiday to commemorate the abolition of slavery, pays homage to the contribution, resilience of those persons in its annual Emancipation Day celebration, which have been attended, which have been attended by former presidents of the Republic of Ghana, his Excellency Flight Lieutenant Jerry Rawlins and His Excellency John Agepum Kufo. In the same way that Ghana has been present in Trinidad and Tobago as we celebrate our Emancipation Day, I am happy to return to Africa and to Ghana to celebrate your Independence Day with you. As we in Trinidad and Tobago celebrate with you today the 63rd Independence Day of the Republic of Ghana, I hold out to you the best wishes of the government and people of Trinidad and Tobago for peace, progress and prosperity of the government and people of the Republic of Ghana. Happy independence to the people of Ghana from the people of Trinidad and Tobago. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. We shall have a poetry recital and drama appellation by the Garrison Basel School. And your excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the school to perform the drum appellation and poetry recital is Garrison Basic School from 4 Garrison Education Center, 4 BN in the Kumasi Metropolis. The appellation was written by the head teacher, Mr. Isaac Osaikofo, and this is done to usher in very important personalities to rise and address their people. In this case, his Excellency, the President of the Republic of Ghana, His Excellency Nanado Dankwa Ekufuado, is respectfully invited to step forward to deliver his independence address to the nation. Allah, <laughs> Oh no, oh no, na ho brasil na butrenti. Wo jina konso konso so atutu ompre no. Ama atutu osai. Na ne impress anso na wo to no. Eku modu ma bebre. E modu ma pempem so. E ma wona ho fopa tu da na ho. Wo no no, wo bemem. Wo yo chiman de sekan. E tuna kan ye sunsun kuta ti se kuta de ne. Wo nyire wo nsem na sun firi wo nsada. Wa, wo tase tase obu oni ni de. Do bo do bo ti se se bi. Ko ko kra cha wo bo abo ani kra ta na ko ja ba se bo we kia for da se. Wa, oh, yum, 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 y
Mungu si uhumpupu ya okote. Oma panyi tuja rampu we. Nana ado dao kwa akufu ado. Your Excellency, I don't want the streets one factory. I don't want village one dam. I don't want constituency one ambulance for baby. I'm a penia, hey, a teacher for, a nurse for, a new man who do, a kunia niti ni na adam wo. Ukura umudi yemu tisa brakosia. Uwa tima tisa ni akopa sechiri. Free SHS Papa, money yo. Nana money yo wate. Nana money yo. If it's the one my young uncle, yes, I'm fatter. Young, I said, bit of fracture. Call ourselves also Gold Coast. So Asante became part of the Gold Coast and they fought for the independent. So that is a big sacrifice. The 63rd Independence Day parade here at the Babayara Sports Stadium uh, just had. Teacher Kantanka, who is a historian at the Minsha Palace, tell us that contrary to some historical narratives, that uh, the Ashanti Kingdom at the time did not want Ghana to be independent, that indeed they joined the rest of the people of the then Gold Coast to strive and to fight for the attainment of independence. And so, whoever has that narrative. Uh, you must begin to revise your notes at this point in time. Uh, we are still seeing uh, various groups. These are nurses groups showing what staff they are also made of, uh, participating actively here at this uh, independence. These are fruit sellers and producers. Everyone, all people from all walks of life are here and they are fully participating, participating in this event. event. And what, and excites, what excites me about this is uh, Selikem, the patriotism. Nobody is being paid for taking part in this parade. Everyone here is doing that on the basis of volunteerism. And so it means that the Ghanaian can volunteer. The Ghanaian can offer service for free. The Ghanaian is patriotic. The Ghanaian, oh, or two for said to two, right there, sitting in state together with uh, his wife and uh, other uh, dignitaries from the Ashanti uh, kingdom. And so I was talking about the, the spirit of the Ghanaian when the right atmosphere is created for him. You, you, you don't agree with me? Exactly. Um, it's important for us to um, acknowledge that we are who we are, we have an identity. That identity is something that cannot be taken away from us. Uh, no matter how globalized we are, uh, being the Ghanaian you are, with the language you speak and where you come from makes you you. And it is protecting our land, our natural resources, our assets, and defending what we have. And there you have in your short day, uh, the Kayaye who uh, have just come in. We were telling you uh, earlier about the Kayaye. Uh, just okay. before them, bush meat sellers yeah. uh, just uh, won't buy, but you see the Kayaye. And for those uh, who may not be they familiar. They do not need a yeah. banner. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they, they, by their head pants, you can tell yeah. um, what they are. Uh, and, and, and who they are and what they, they trade uh, in. Yes, uh, these are uh, uh, the, the Bush Meat Sellers Association. Bush, these are not just ordinary meat sellers, but they are the bush meat. Uh, That's the first time I'm having to know that there's an association of bush meat sellers. And it's exciting to see this association. Then it means that um, the bush meat industry can be regularized and uh, regulated, I beg your pardon. Uh, that's because anybody kills anything and calls it bush meat. But once they have an association, I'm sure that they will ensure that we have wholesome uh, meat coming from uh, Ghanaian bushes. And it also raises the point of having uh, minority groups uh, involved in whatever you're doing. And no matter how little the group is, or no matter how small the business community is, it is represented here. Let's now look at the Kayaye. And for those who are not familiar with the word Kayaye, or Kayayo uh, simply refers to a girl who carries items on the head. It's headquarters. Uh, 
around markets in Ghana and um, uh, there is uh, a strong advocacy to help these girls and take them off the streets, give them something more dignifying to do uh, than carry items on their heads like this. I'm sure they are here to make a statement. And these are young uh, pupils from different schools here uh, displaying what they hope to become in future. In Ghana, most children want to either become doctors or lawyers or, or nurses. And, and we are seeing that these are our future leaders, uh, exactly. Uh, uh, and um, the president. <laughs> <laughs> this is an elder. elderly person. Okay, so so uh, uh, you found us laughing there. It's 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 a relief. It's a comic relief. So, Commander, we have uh, the veterans. veterans veterans administration Ghana. Yes. The veterans administration Ghana. Um, at this point, I'll go back uh, to uh, um, uh, the teacher Kantanka to take some comments from teacher Kantanka. Uh, teacher Kantanka, you were telling us about the veterans. The war, the war that was fought, the Second World War, uh, what, what, what actually led to that war and why did people from the then Gold Coast participate in uh, that war? Yeah, um, the, 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 yeah, the Second World War, uh, which started in in 1939 and ended in 1945 uh, was packed by Germany. I think at a point in time Germany wanted to control the world and uh, they started taking control over the neighboring states around Europe. Uh, so the world was alarmed and the whole world uh, decided to stop Germany from the, the acts. And Ghana uh, was um, part of Britain. That is, uh, it was, Britain was our colonial master. So wherever they went, we had to go with them. So people were recruited from here to fight at different fronts for, uh, to liberate us from the German control. Uh, that is where we had these uh, veterans coming from. After the war, uh, the pensioned soldiers organized themselves into an association called the Veterans Association. It is this same veteran who marched to the castle to demand some rights from the colonial master. Where uh, they were, three of them were shot and that sparked the independence yeah. struggle. And the three were Sergeant Ajiti, Corporal Atipu, and Private Odati Lamte. Um, the president conferring uh, with his guest of honor, the Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago, seated to the left of the president, of course, is his uh, wife, the First Lady, uh, Mrs. Rebecca Ekufu Ado. And so, uh, presently, we are seeing uh, the military setup. Yes, for those are the physical training instructors who are setting the stage for their physical training display. But before then, let me just add something little to what teacher Kantaka said. The veterans, those who fought in the Second World War, most of them are very weak or have passed on. And so those on parade were persons who have participated in most of our peacekeeping missions. So most of the veterans could not march today because of their age. Yeah. Mm. Yes. All right, so uh, again, a snapshot of the beautiful scenes of Ghanaians. President J.A. Kufour, uh, he made it here as well. Uh, president J.A. Kufour was president of the Republic of Ghana from uh, 2001 until he handed over in 2009 to the late Professor J.E.A. Mills who had won the elections in the year 2008 and the General Secretary of the New Patriotic Party, John Boyju, uh, a while ago, comparing with uh, some security personnel. And of course the theme for this year's uh, Independence Day celebration 
is consolidating our gains consolidating our gains as a people uh, we are looking back on how far we have come uh, the fact that we've been able to maintain the peace and unity in diversity regardless of the fact that Ghana speaks 76 different languages has 76 different languages we still have uh, that um, unity in diversity and unity in diversity in terms of culture uh, in terms of uh, other uh, things as well as our way of doing things and this year we are focusing on consolidating our gains what are our gains as a people and how are we bringing this to bear together as a people how are we putting our wheels to the shoulder to make our nation uh, great and strong and maintain the peace in many events uh, organized by the military and I've seen military uh, officers display and show what stuff they are made of. I've seen displays and uh, events organized by cultural troops and how beautifully they can display the culture of Ghana and the diversity of Ghana but never have I seen such a mix of all activities whether cultural, religious and uh, military and uh, school children come together to provide such a beautiful uh, scene. This is the Baba Yara Sports Stadium and we have already told you, we heard from the uh, police PRO of the Ashanti region himself a while ago, uh, the stadium is already filled to capacity. They are unable to accept any new entrance and uh, he has urged all those who are not yet here to remain at home and watch the proceedings on TV because there's no longer space to accommodate anybody at, uh, at the stadium here and that tells you the extent to which the people are excited about uh, the relocation of this year but this is a beautiful uh, display of some Ghanaian dancers
National Culture in Kumasi. The trainers are Karima Esumedu Sechi, the regional director for the Center for National Culture, Mustafa Isa, head of performing arts department of the center, Kofi Obeng Onyina, the sectional head, and Julius Yaukwansa, the acting dance instructor and choreographer. And that was a performance from Next the we shall have center military for physical National training culture. display. And um, the military will now uh, show us um, the physical training display. Uh, so again, um, what's, 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 what's the significance of such a display on an occasion such as this? But uh, again, anytime we have these scenes, I cannot resist the temptation just to express my own excitement and admiration for the beauty. Uh, you, you can see the diversity. Um, even though you find a lot more people in Kente, and this is where we have the, the, the military people coming in. Exactly. Physical fitness is number one requirement of every military person. And so for those who will be interested in joining the military in future, if you are not fit, please, you are out of the question. And these are physical training instructors. And so they will have to be extra fit more than the average military person. There are some displays that you would see here and you think it's very easy. If you want to try it, you end up breaking your limbs <laughs> or your neck. Uh. And so I would advise children in, in their homes that never to try it. So it's just to show to the whole world the fitness level of the Ghana Armed Forces. And also to let you know that some tasks may not be that simple, but with constant training, you can easily... and 19 when we saw that military person jump In 25 years of media excellence to our business community in Ghana and abroad, yet that one has it.
So he's, that is backward roll forward out of the chair and then forehead spring and backward roll to sit. It looks very simple. But it's not that simple. <laughs> can imagine the hours of rehearsal that had to go into doing this. Because as an individual, you may be able to do it alone, but to do it together with others and in unison would demand a lot of practice and rehearsal. I just saw what happened there. Yes. Uh, and it's almost like matching while still engaging in some form of exercise. Yes. And they are doing it to precision and timing. Yes. Back band lift and handspring in pairs. That's what we are watching now. Bend back lift and handspring in pairs. So these are the personnel. The physical who, training who, instructors. Who, who train the military the, personnel. The military personnel. Yes. And they are military personnel themselves. Commander, did you go through this? Oh, yes. Every military personnel goes through. You did this? I may not know. I didn't necessarily <laughs> do that because I am not a PTI. So the PT course oh is also a call. And the crowd went ecstatic over exactly. this one. Because yeah, it's well, pretty. Yes, very, very it's, nice. It's, it was very nice. Mm. But if there was a mistake there, you can imagine the kind of pain <laughs> it would have caused uh, the receiver of uh, that mistake. Exactly. And, so, uh, and this is where uh, the, the warning comes in. Do not try this at home. You need to be an expert to yes. be able to try some of these stunts that uh, the military personnel here are displaying. The president of yeah, the president impressed, is excited. Uh, with <laughs> what he's seen. He's the commander-in-chief of, of the Ghana Armed Forces. If this so is what it takes to join the military, um, no wonder I'm a journalist. I could never have joined the military. Oh, you can with determination. I believe everything in life is about determination. Mm. And most of us go without having any idea, but with determination, you, one can sail through. Mm. But it's difficult, I must admit. So that's one phase of the display. And now we are having the individual display. So that's a freestyle display by the physical instructors and the aim is to test their ability and agility. Oh. And the response from the crowd is So uh, at this level, you as a, a physical trainer on the stage, you come and do whatever you feel like doing? But they've rehearsed, so mm. you know which one you are doing and which the other person is doing. Mm -hmm. So that we can have a variety of them. Do not try this at home. You will feel dizzy. I'm already feeling dizzy on his behalf. <laughs> I feel dizzy on his behalf, really. Uh, that was amazing. That was amazing. Uh, again, shots from the Babayara Sports Stadium in Kumasi. Filled to capacity stadium. Uh, Ghanaians are enthusiastic about Ghana. The people of Kumasi are enthusiastic about Ghana and they are excited that this honor has been done them. The national parade has been brought to their doorsteps and currently uh, the physical trainers of the Ghana Armed Forces on display uh, showing us what staff they are made of and if you have ideas of joining the military, uh, perhaps these are some exercises you may be psyching yourself up for. <laughs> exactly. You may have to take part in some of these, especially if you are a physical, physical training instructor. If you join the physical training instructors, then you would have to necessarily take part. The next is horse work. Mm. And I'll leave the description to you. Horse work. 
horsework. Okay, so when you said horsework, I was looking out for where the horses were. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not seeing horses. I'm seeing men jump over what, uh, looks, like what looks like a horse. <laughs> yes. Uh, and, and, and so this is what... Um, uh, to, to ensure that if you meet any obstacle, you will be able You'll to be scale able to over. cross it easily. Mm. Yes, so that is face, wow. bolt, on and off. Mm. Then we have the through vault and astride vault. Mm. Right. <laughs> that it's was all beautiful. Yes, yeah, all part of it. <laughs> uh, of course, uh, as Antino said, it's to Autumn Force 82, the second, uh, also admiring the scenes here. He must be a very proud king at the moment. Uh, is, uh, uh, he's here uh, admiring and observing uh, events as they unfold. The scenes here are so beautiful. Um, the cameras will not be able to bring every uh, thing to you in your homes. But we'll try. Uh, to give you as much as we can. Uh, this is uh, still the armed forces, the Ghana armed forces, uh, displaying some skills. Uh, these are physical trainers and uh, Commander Veronica Ahen, who is here in commentary position with me, has been uh, warning us uh, that we should not try this at home. Uh, this is for experts. Uh, if you are not one, do not try it. You may end up hurting yourself. Selikam, did you ever dream of engaging in any of these exercises? Absolutely not. <laughs> it appears that even this one was well rehearsed mm. over and over again. It takes a lot of effort and skill to have to get to this point of perfection. Wow. This is just admirable and you can just hear the crowd appreciate um, the display, the physical display. Of course, the Ghana Armed Forces, noted as one of the best around the world uh, on many UN peacekeeping missions, uh, the reports have indicated that the Ghana Armed Forces have been very professional. Uh, and uh, meticulous at and whatever is it is they do. Really? Yes. And that is a dive and roll through the loop. Mm -hmm. Dive and roll through the loop. Oh. Uh -huh. So, um, and, and two persons come almost at the same time. So and one a loop and one dives through the loop. Sorry. Oh. One oh, creates wow, a loop okay. and the other one dives through it. And here again, uh, with the least mistake, yes. there could be a crash of heads. Exactly. It's, uh, so it's done with training. Training. And let me add that Lieutenant Gershon Adasi and his able safety supervisors, mm. Chief Petty Officer Class 1, Aqua ben Bernard, Staff Sergeant Oklu Roland Moses, and Petty Officer Class 1, Seshi Sylvester, Fly Sergeant Amponsa Jeffrey, and Staff Sergeant Adato Courage worked tirelessly to bring this personnel to this level. Even though they are physical training instructors, they still needed to train, train, and train. This is GBC's coverage of the 63rd Independence Parade and uh, the first national parade ever to be held in the Ashanti regional capital, Kumasi. The first was in the northern regional capital of Tamale. And here in Kumasi, we're seeing beautiful scenes, beautiful sounds, beautiful people, beautiful cultures, diversity of cultures meeting at one spot. And that spot is here at the Babayara Sports Stadium. So the loop and dive and loop. Dive and roll through the loop. Mm. But this one is somersault through the loop. So he has created the loop by using somersault over him. Mm. 
Oh, wow. So that's a higher jump. That's yes, a higher, higher jump. one. <laughs> and again, with the least of mistakes, uh, we could have trouble in our hands. Exactly. And so what it means, again, is that don't try this at home. It's for the experts. And this uh, is just an indication of how physically fit uh, the men of the Ghana Armed Forces are. And uh, I'm beginning to That's get memories, memories of yes. Tamale coming back. Uh, I saw something similar and then it began to blaze with fire and we had men and uh, pe personnel from the Ghana Armed Forces jump. Okay, so we go. There we go again. You can... <laughs> Uh, and the crowd is responding to this again <laughs> the crowd went ecstatic over this one uh anytime someone jumps through it successfully because if you fail to do so you will not go back home the same you can't afford to touch any of the edges you cannot but this will also be very hot yes <laughs> it is fire so it's hot <laughs> Oh dear. <laughs> so, so again, I, and uh, and um, I'm always curious about some of these things. So, in practicality, what would this do for us as a people or as uh, uh, an, an army? Um, what's that, this supposed to mean? That if you have a mission to accomplish mm -hmm. and you need to overcome this, mm -hmm. then you have to find a way of overcoming it. You don't have to allow fire to be an obstacle. You don't have to allow rain to be an obstacle. In fact, nothing must be an Heights obstacle. Heights we've seen should not be an, uh, yes, an, an, an obstacle. obstacle. Yes. Because they're jumping at a high altitude, if you like. But again, you have to be so precise exactly. that you have to go through fire mm -hmm. to be able to get Achieve to your, your task. Your, your, wow. <laughs> and so there we He's had it. Over he, it. He, he tried to jump over it, but indeed, okay. So this is jumping over it. Yes, we are. The first, the first was jumping through it. Through it. Now it's jumping over it. Actually, okay. And and, and that's he jump. jumped paying compliments. What does that mean? He was saluting when he, he jumped through the ring. Oh, you oh. didn't see? Did you miss okay, it? Okay, that was very fast. Uh, <laughs> oh, paying compliments. He, yes, was saluting he was saluting whilst yes. jumping at the same time. Exactly. And he jumps through yeah exactly mm. and so yes mm. and the president is rising to show his appreciation so the leader is going to ask permission again for them to march off mm -hmm. Yes, and their motto is strong mind, strong body. Strong mind, strong, strong, mind, strong yeah. body. Yes. Uh, of course, you need a strong mind to be able to withstand some of the very torturous experiences. And then you need a strong body to be able to withstand the very physically uh, demanding tax that um, the Ghana Armed Forces have to go through in order to protect our territorial integrity, but also to participate at the UN level and the AU level to ensure that Ghana remains an active member of the UN and also an active member of the AU and other international bodies such as the ECOWAS and so on. And so it's instructive uh, that we are aware that our men and women in uniform are always physically and mentally stable and are let at all times to protect our interest. Um, and that was the uh, physical trainers of the Ghana Armed Forces. Um, so now uh, everything is in the hands of the security agencies at this point in time. We've seen the horsework. What next? We have a little surprise. Prize. And I'll start speaking only when they start it. Oh, so you have a surprise for who? For the audience, for, for, for the president? For, for our viewers. So it's a little surprise. Yes. And this okay, this is a, a short scenario as to how...
channel with me, Daniel Dazi. We are taking you straight to Kumase, where at the Babayara Sports Stadium, the 63rd Independence Day celebration is currently ongoing. An interesting military demonstration is underway. Let's join the feed now. Sergeant with Sergeant Tebi Kennedy, Kenneth and Sergeant Kina Steven and Corporal Atichu Charles. And so the, sh uh, the dog has helped them to arrest mm. whoever is fomenting the trouble. Uh -huh. So they just to inform the public that if there's something that needs special forces to go and op uh, undertake the operation, they would go and do it. So now they are searching the criminal to be sure he has nothing on him. The crowd of people here at the Babayara Stadium observing uh, as the Ghana military, Ghana armed forces, I should say, uh, show us what stuff they're made of and uh, how prepared they are to protect the territorial integrity of the Republic of Ghana. We've come a long way, 63 years of independence, 63 years of so much to celebrate and so much to look forward to. President uh, now taking his seat. So the special forces are now marching off. Yes. Uh, assignment has been done. Yes, accomplished. Accomplished, yes. and um, <laughs> their tax is done, and uh, they will now go home if go you like. Home. Yes. They've been dismissed. Yes, they sought permission. It's in the uh, military it, that dismissal it, it, means something different from the rest. When you are dismissed, I've heard that in the military, and that means go home. Uh, oh, it, 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 in it, other it circles, happened. when you are dismissed, it means don't come back here ever again. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it has different meanings at different times. Mm. So if you are on parade and it said turn to your right, dismiss, it means turn to your right. You have closed whatever you are doing. Go home. But you can also be dismissed from the armed forces. <laughs> <laughs> so it can be used in the, the connotation that you know as well. Thank you so much, uh, the Vice President of the Republic. Again, uh, at the risk of sounding repetitive, the Babayara Sports Stadium is filled to capacity. 40,000 plus people are here. We have thousands more around the vicinity of the stadium. Every parking space, every sitting space has been occupied to the extent that the police have made a, a public appeal to people not to leave their homes for the stadium and that uh, they should stay at home because even if you come, you will not be able to get a chance to come inside the stadium. Um, now we see um, the mass band again. Yes, uh, the mass band will be trooping, after which the contingents, the Ghana Armed Forces and the other security services will now march back onto the parade. You know, the mass band is part of the parade. And because it will not have time to march past like the other contingent, it normally troops. And the aim of the trooping is to display. So I'm sure with time we'll see what they have for us. So this is the mass band. Um, and the mass band uh, is made up of various bands from the various wings of the Ghana Armed Forces. Yes, we have the Armed Forces Central Band. We have the Army Band. We have the Navy Band the Air Force Band and the Police Band. And so they uh, always come together during... And on this occasion, who then leads the band? Is it the Army, the Navy, uh, the Police, or who leads the band? On Normally the senior, the most senior, and in this person is the band officer. In this instance is the band of science, the person of Naval Lieutenant Stanley Theophilus Brock. And so he's assisted by Lieutenant Emmanuel Eric Yaboa, Lieutenant Fort 
Foster Opokujan, and Assistant Superintendent of Police Felix Ofe Ose Maabua. So the leader is the band officer. Yes. And, and uh, in the military, you also have band masters. He is the band officer. Mm. So these are drum majors. We have the band. Okay. Uh, uh, the band masters normally are behind the band. So those marching now with the maze are the drum majors and they display with the maze. And then we have the band masters. They are normally behind the band as they march. So maybe when they come around out. So these are drum majors. And they are led by the senior most drum major who is in the person of Chief Perry Officer Class 1. Chief Perry Officer Class 1, Tay IET James. He is the most senior drum major. So we have the drum major from the Army, Sergeant, Staff Sergeant Abeka Edward, and Staff Sergeant Kweku Emmanuel. We have the drum major for the Navy, Leading Seaman Sani Taju. Emmanuel and Flight Sergeant Blackson Ebenezer from the Air Force and they are all drum majors. A while ago, the band had displayed a stool, stool, and we know the significance of stool in the Ghanaian culture. Stool is a mark of authority and royalty. In Asante Kingdom, we, we, are, we are aware of the golden stool, and as a nation, we have the presidential stool. And so, the band, a while ago, demonstrated stool, they displayed the stool. So they are not just uh, marching, but they are marching to communicate. They are marching to send different messages at different times. And uh, a short while ago, Commander just indicated that the ship we saw was that of his two. And um, there's uh, uh, a Santini himself who occupies his two. Um, uh, and we know the significance of his two in the Ashanti kingdom. This two actually reflects the spirit of Ashanti. It's true. All, all chiefs uh, have a, a storeroom where stools of the past chiefs are kept. And you have to do your work very well and uh, with distinction before your stool will be preserved. Otherwise, it will be left white and it will not be blackened. The blackened stools are the most prestigious of all the stools. So this is, um, is a trophy for every chief who lives honorably. All right, so it wasn't by accident that we saw the military uh, do that uh, for us, especially as we are in the Ashanti region. And so that was the drum majors displaying with their maze. And that is a mark of authority as far as they are also concerned. And that is the senior, most senior drum major, Chief Petty Officer IT. And let me quickly add that the band masters, we have Chief Petty Officer Class 1, Quist Love from the Ghana Navy. We also have Warrant Officer Class 1, Dali Lunidas from the Ghana Armed Forces Central Band. Warrant Officer Class 1, Anna George from the Army Band. And that is the band officer, Lieutenant Brock. We also have Chief Petty Officer Class 1, Boachi Emmanuel from the Ghana Navy. And the Ghana Air Force, we have Warrant Officer Class 2, Maya Deng John. And the police, we have Inspector Boateng Nicholas.
the band has put up a set, another display and this time it is unity unity in unity is strength and as a people we need to work together as one currently you are seeing uh, the crowd of people and uh, there's the vice president and his wife waving the flag of Ghana but uh, the band has formed a ship the ship uh, signifying unity at this point in time uh, the unity of Ghana as exemplified by the attendance here uh, as exemplified by the pictures you're seeing on your screens at the moment people from different backgrounds culturally religiously ethnically uh, social status wise everyone is here and the purpose is Ghana the love of Ghana 63rd anniversary of Ghana's independence it is let me quickly add that the drum majors for the police